been an update since the first video of Ivy League. We've done quite a few modifications to it since we first bought it. And what better way to show and talk about that but a road trip. Southern California right now on our way to Chandler, Arizona Wild Horse Pass specifically for the Pro Touring Truck Shootout and uh, what better way to do that but with a 6 speed automatic overdrive and a 400 wheel horsepower LS under the hood so sit back and enjoy the ride we'll talk about the truck a little more I had to pull over in the rest area to turn the cameras back on. So I'm about 25 miles into the trip so far. I'm about ready to climb the whitewater grade. And the sun is really bright right now, so I apologize. But I'm gonna put this little uh, six liter LS3 to work. about every little bump in the road. In the last video, we drove it around Ontario 35, 40 mile an hour. And every little bump, the lower control arms were scraping the ground. If you haven't seen that video, go back in and watch it. Ivy League number one. There was literally an inch of control arm missing from basically dragging ground so often. So again, well, yeah, I'm rolling 80 right now. This is the better part of the 10 freeway, so this is deceiving. We'll get out into some bumpy areas here in a little bit. You'll be able to see that it's really no big deal. Suspension's firm. Now that we've got a shorter sidewall and tire, it's firm, but it's not bad, not bad at all. Like I say, road trip in time. It's comfortable and fun. Just relax and enjoy the ride now. Our Pro Touring IFS uses our custom spindle. It's a single casting for left and right. So we've got caliper brackets on both sides. But the steering arm is removable. We've got a bolt-on steering arm. That is one of the key components to our suspension. If you try to run a factory steering arm with a rack and pinion, you're going to lose steering angle. Plus bump steer, Ackerman, it's just not desirable, so we just made our own. It uses common brake kits, which is nice. We run a Ride Tech million mile warranty shock on these. They're pretty much standard with a power rack. Our control arms are all custom. We raise the cross member up to get more ground clearance. Now we don't have to worry about that cross member hitting the ground anymore. The truck is a little bit lower than it was before, even though it had a drop spindle, uh, drop springs that were actually cut. So while it did look good before sitting still, it, it was just no fun to drive. You were white knuckling it behind the wheel anytime you were driving it. So I can say now we're just kind of rolling along. With the 325 gear in it with the double overdrive tranny. I can actually roll a lot faster than I'm going right now, but I'm trying to be good. The four link install is about as easy as it gets. Basically use existing holes on the frame to locate our bracket. 
and then the bracket that goes on the axle uses the factory leaf pad, fully encapsulates the axle housing, and it's got a little pin that locates off the leaf spring pad, so it can't rotate or rock. Nice and strong, so if you want to throw a bunch of power at it, it's fine. But this engine runs well. We basically took an LS2 block and crank. We put six and an eighth rods in it with race tech, like ten and a half to one pistons. Fairly mild cam. Uh, I want to say it was like 230, 236 with like 575 lift, 580 lift. But we basically put the LS3 heads on it. So that way we could run the LS3 intake manifold. So PSI, they got us a harness where we could run the factory ECU. So it's a 58X. But West Tech tuned it for us. With a very conservative tune, it made like 390 and change, just under 400 wheel horsepower. Like I say, it runs good. Truck weighs 38, 3900 pounds. So it's like 10 to 1 power to weight ratio. My guess is on a prep surface, it would probably run 12s in the quarter. Again, not bad for a cruiser. All right, we're about two hours deep into the trip right now. No drama. Just enjoying the hell out of driving this truck. It is so much fun. Rolling in the fast lane, pretty much as fast as you want to go without drawing attention to yourself. But I parked myself in the, the slow lane for 10, 15 miles. This part of the, the 10 doesn't get maintained often. And this is a main corridor for big trucks. So I wanted to just sit here in the slow lane and just run through these bumps, which I'm hitting now, before I would be panicked. Between the bump steer and the front end trying to dive and hit the control arms, it was scary at 30, 35 mile an hour. Going highway speeds is downright dangerous. But right now, this is easy. Even with the low profile tires, I would actually say we could probably increase the tire pressure a little bit. Just to try to get a little better mileage, I guess. I'm kind of curious to see what we're doing right now. My guess is it's probably 13 to 15 miles to the gallon. This thing's a brick, and I've been averaging 80, 85 mile an hour. I'm sure if I slowed down to 70, 75, it would probably get 15, 20% better mileage, but then it'd be no fun. So there, just hit a big dip. The only drama from that was the tire. I think it just hit the inner fender panel. I didn't feel that for the last 10, 15 miles at all. So that dip was pretty good. I don't know what that looks like on camera, but it didn't feel dramatic in here. So again, just listen to some music and just having a good time here by myself in the middle of the desert, driving a badass truck. All right, we're coming up to Blythe, making good time guys with the dually and the trailer are behind me somewhere. So I'm going to pull over and try to do a little photo shoot here at the river. 
See, I gotta kill a little bit of time. I'm gonna let the other guys pass me, and then I'll play catch up once we're in Arizona. Even though technically the speeds for those guys with the trailer are gonna be elevated once they're in Arizona. All right, a little side trip here to do a little photo shoot. At the river in Blythe, at the cove. This is the second time we've come through here and done a photo shoot with it, but this time we've got the new wheels on it. Unfortunately, since you last saw it too, got a little fender bender there at the front. She looks good with these new wheels. Drives fantastic. See, I'm gonna get gas now. See what kind of mileage we're getting. I just got a message from the boys. They're about 30 miles behind me. Honestly, these seat belts are my only complaint on this truck. Just takes a couple tries to get it there. So, I've probably got maybe 20 minutes to get across the highway and get some gas before they're passing me. Again, they're in the dually in the trailer, so I'll probably be making a little better time, but once you cross over in Arizona, the speed limits will go up, so. Not that Evan was going the speed limit before that. I don't know about you guys, but I always panic going over those stupid tire spikes read the signs 10 times doesn't matter even though it says exit I panic every time thinking I'm just gonna annihilate those brand new Falcon tires all right so we're gonna go get some gas you guys but I hate roundabouts only because nobody knows how to use them pretty much if you're in it you have the right of way air belts has got to wait nobody understands that they think hey it's my turn to go they go anyways I'll step off my soapbox All right, so I know I said the worst part of the truck was <laughs> the seatbelt. I take it back. Getting gas in this stupid thing sucks. The filler nozzles are just way too low. Let's see if I can get some angle in there. So the inlet tube is just maybe three or four inches above where the tank is. So you got to sit here and babysit it. You can go full throttle. And as you can see, it spills all the time. We got stains all over down here. Tank's almost empty right now. Again, it's telling me low fuel, but I think that center's a little bit off. You can kind of see our four link hiding in there too. That's probably the most throttle I've ever been able to put on without it kicking back. So clearly it's pretty dang low right now. But curious to see, I'm gonna check my phone right now, see how many miles I've traveled. I don't know if I wanna trust the odometer just yet. All right, just finished filling up. Passenger side tank. And uh, the guys just messaged too and said that they're not far behind me. So luckily enough, timing wise, we're almost perfect. They're gonna get ahead of me right now and uh, I'll be able to turn the cameras on as we go by them again. I may or may not just hang back with them. Depends on how fast Evan's running. But let's take a look. All right, so I don't think we got a good mileage as I was thinking. Again, I was running 80-85 plus Scirocco Summit. I think it's a 1,500 foot elevation change there. So let's go to the old calculator. 
3.3. Well, I was just under my assumptions. 12.76 mile a gallon uh, as of right now. Still no text from Daniel yet. It's Daniel and Evan that are in the dually. So I'm just going to roll over here, shut the cameras off for now. And I guess either sit and wait for them to go by or wait for a text. They might be sabotaging me. They might already have gone by. Well, like I expected, they've already passed. So now I'm in playing catch-up mode. Been sitting here on the on-ramp for five minutes. But here we go. Requesting a flyby. Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. No, no, ma'am, this is not a good idea. Sorry, Goose, but it's time to buzz the tower. Two of your snot nosed jockeys did a flyby on my tower at over 400 knots. I want somebody's butt, I want it now, I've had it! Alright, we stopped about 70 miles outside of Phoenix at a rest area. I'm fine, but these guys aren't prepared. So, they're taking a pee break. All right. So, we left the, the rest area maybe 40 miles ago. And now we're exiting to eat. There's a joke in here about, I don't know, going to the bathroom and then could have waited another 35 minutes. Or less because we were rolling 75 mile an hour but I digress so we're gonna stop here uh, they're having breakfast it's much time for me because I had breakfast five hours ago but either way we're gonna have some crackle barrel right now all right just got done eating we're about 40 minutes away from the track so the guys are inside paying I gotta get some cameras rolling right now, but we'll be headed on our way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you gonna stop for gas? Uh, no, I'm good. Alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, follow us there, we're like 45 minutes out. Okay. Alright. Alright, we're getting close. Can't apologize, GoPro batteries are dead. So I gotta work off the phone audio. Yeah, we were just on the 202 south slash east loop. Merging onto the 10. All right. This facility always brings back good memories. Back in the 80s, my dad used to race drag boats. While we would mostly go to Ming and Parker, a lot of his teammates would come out here to Firebird. A lot of cool things happened out here too. This facility is just plain awesome. And we have arrived. Albeit we went in the wrong gate the first time. But we are here. Nice drift. Right? That's 
That's your banker lap right there. That's what he wanted to do. Just get in one solid run. Look at that, a 13-1. You guys ready for a pro tour and truck shootout? All right. All right, we got a little surprise for you, Sean. Oh, damn. You officially have your own. That's a lot of Photoshop. <laughs> Make it look that good. Make that truck look good. Oh, yeah. Looks like good at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> Are those fan cards? Yeah. Hero yeah. cards. Yes. You want, me, you want an autograph? Got to autograph it. <laughs> yep, got to autograph it. I want the first copy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's, like, that's even a good though. picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> right on. The look of concentration. I know I didn't do much updates over the weekend, but this was mostly supposed to be a, a road trip video. Anyways, I am on my way home now. It's uh, it's Sunday night. I am burnt out. Long weekend, a lot of running around, capturing everything. Everything I could possibly video, narrate. Uh, yeah, I'm filthy dirty. I am hungry, so I am currently sitting in the Carl's Jr. drive-thru in Quartzite. I was going to try to make it to Blythe, but uh, yeah, I'm hungry. So truck ran good all the way. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm broke right now. The truck ran good all the way to the Pro Touring truck shootout. So anyways, yeah, that's basically what's happening right now. Truck's running good, even still right now. Give me some food. All right, we have made it back to the shop. Fun trip, happy to get home, get some sleep, have some food, hang out with the family. So came in this morning to work, that little last little leg to get here. But uh, truck ran good. I got gas one last time. Uh, 320 miles and not that I was trying to make time but I was making very good time up until one stopping to have a good gas and get food and also the issues in Cabazon so I actually think that it would have been about a four hour trip had that not been the case so you do the math four hours 320 miles this truck rips down the freeway so looking forward to the next trip so so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed